In this video, I will show you how I went about sculpting and painting this piglin from the upcoming strategy game, Minecraft Legends. Figure out the size you want him to be, and I just roughly traced over a screenshot I took from the first video released. For the armature, I am using some relatively fine fencing wire, twisting it up, and holding it against my reference. I am picturing where his skeleton would be. I have his legs and pelvis wrapping around the spine and into the head. Some aluminium foil to build up the body, scrunch it a few times to make it easier to shape. I rolled that around the spine and then squished it tight so it fits into the reference. Bent the legs into a walking stance, pushed a needle tool through the shoulder area, twisted up some more wire and pushed it through to create the arms. I am using a flexible polymer clay called Cosclay. Rolling out a small piece and covering the body area, blending the pieces together. I bake that for the first time and while it is in the oven I start shaping out the legs with foil. Press the foil firmly and create motion to the legs by having one leg longer and pointed. Add a hole for the armature and set those aside. Moving on to the arms, make these the same length as each other and keep checking back with the reference. A nice solid cube for the head. Now that he is baked, I can push all the foil pieces onto the wire armature with a bit of liquid clay to help adhere the surfaces. Using a finer wire, I wrap that around the arms to secure them in place. Twisting the head slightly adds a lot more motion to the piece. He is now ready to be covered in clay. Before baking, I add a hole at the top of his right arm for later and keep the ends of his hands uncovered. I then give him a good sand with a 120 grit to smooth down the surfaces. I then bulk up the chest area with more clay. With a thin sheet of clay, I start cutting out the size of the kilt. I then use a scalpel to cut out the details. Carefully lift it from the tile and wrap the kilt around his waist. Mark and cut off the excess and blend the top band into the body. I am using baby oil on an old paintbrush to smooth the surfaces and to lift the fabric away from the legs a bit. Marking out where the belt will sit and cutting some thin strips to create the belt pieces. For the pig face buckle, I am constantly measuring off the reference with my tools and cutting all the pieces to size. With some kind of straight edge tool, I go in to create the smaller inner squares. I can then place these onto the front of the kilt. There are also two little squares off to one side. I baked him again because I tend to squish everything. I'm now moving on to the top of the right arm, creating a square the same size of the arm and indenting lines around the rim, piercing a hole into the foil and adding a twisted bit of wire sticking out. Cover this in clay and indent some rings around. With some thin strips, I am adding on the metal details around the arms, adding a cap at the bottom and indenting some details, pushing a hole into the center of the hand area. The outer part of the armour comes up higher so I'll blend this extra piece on. And there's also another piece up higher with one of the corners clipped. It appears that his mace arm extends to become a flail so I am going to have mine extending out. Twisting up a length of wire, shaping a foil cube and wrapping the cube in clay. One of the corners has a little cube cut out of it. I am mixing in a bit of firmer clay for the pieces I want to hold more detail. I am then cutting these into small cubes and twisting a hole through the center. I then use a square drive bit to put an indent in each side. Shape the flail to give it some motion. I have baked these pieces and can now thread them onto the wire. Adding some liquid clay around the first bead, then a little bit of spacer clay, then add another bead. Continue this until you are happy with the length and then you can place that into the figure's hand area. I am then shaping some small pyramids and cubes to place around the head of the flail. Blend them to the base, alternate the cube and pyramid positions on each side, then bake again. I am now covering up the end of the left hand and putting on an oversized cap. Piercing a hole in the centre, shaping a grappling hook, putting a hole down the centre, adding some wire and joining the two together. Cut a thin strip for the leather armband, cut to length and remove the section from the outer arm. Add a thin square for the shoulder armour, another little piece just here and both arms are now done. Moving on to the head, I first bulk up the neck area so that the head appears to sit lower on the body. A square piece for the snout, I am making this a bit thicker. Mark in the nostrils, then indent. Rectangular prisms for the tusks, little squares for the eyes, and curved rectangles for the ears, blended to the side of the head. Here I am figuring out how I'm going to do the helmet. Whenever I start a project, I have no clue how I'm going to approach it. I just start and see where it takes me. 
I started by putting a bit of a headband along the top, cut a small piece for between the eyes, adding a strip above the ears, basically just adding strips of clay around the facial features and blending them together until it looked like a helmet. A long strip of clay to run down the centre of the helmet to create the base for the plume or crest. I had to look that one up because I didn't know what it was called. Doubling it up on top to create some more height. I then sketched out a bit of a hockey stick shape and traced that onto a sheet of clay. Cut out three of these, indent the base of the plume and bake the hockey sticks to make this a bit easier. Then press them into the helmet. I should have pierced his ear before baking but I will carefully do that now with a small drill bit. Adding a metal loop for strength then surrounding that with clay. It was easier to take his ear off to do this. Reattach the ear and smooth down the helmet. Bake once more and the sculpting is done. Time to paint. I'm using acrylic paint, mixing white, yellow and a bit of red and some water to create his skin tone. I keep mixing until the colour looks close. I'm going to have to do several layers because I buy the cheapest paint ever. I decided to use this as a bit of an undercoat for most of the warmer tone areas. I do not enjoy the painting process. I wish I could just stop at the sculpting stage and be done. I then put down a flat basic coat of each colour. Mixing some drying retardant with the brown, I then use a fine brush to paint in all the crevices. I basically just outline everything I sculpted. For the grey areas, I dab on some lighter grey and just push it around to texture the surfaces. Some highlights on the edges and darker in the shadow areas. Adding a bit more red into the skin tone by dabbing it around. Adding brown into all the low lying areas. This took forever. I'm pretty sure the painting takes me longer than the sculpting. Dabbing on some orange to the golden areas. Painting on some lines to give it a cartoon metallic look. Darkening the crevices. Outlining the base of the kilt and the rim of the socks with a dark brown. Then finally giving all the metal areas a coat of polyurethane gloss. And he is done. Hope you learnt something or at least found it somewhat interesting. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.